This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good morning, Rabbi Isai. Bruchim Abam to the Kailal Agar de Perka here in Kew Garden Hills, New York. Agon Chaydash. So, in honor of Parshas Boy and in honor of Rosh Chaydash, we're going to speak about the first mitzvah that was given to Klal Yisrael. And that is, HaChaydash Hazel Lachem Rosh Chadashim. Rishain Hu Lachem Shana. This month shall be for you the first of the months. It is the first to you for the months of the year. This month we know what month is referring to. It's referring to the month of Nisan. But we need to make the following observation, and that is the word Nisan does not appear in the Chumash. Nowhere does Nisan appear in the Chumash. And for that matter, not only does Nisan not appear in the Chumash, none of the names of the Jewish months appear in the, Chum- in the Chumash. All we have is Bachodesh Harishain. Or we have Bachodesh Hasheni. Or we have Bachodesh Hashlishi. Bo Midbar Sinai. But the names of the months that we use to refer to them are not uh, found in the Chumash. And nevertheless, today I don't think anybody would even be aware that today is the 11th month. Actually, today is a very significant date in uh, Jewish history. And that is, today is the day that Moshe Rabbeinu taught the Torah Klal Yisrael in the beginning of Sefer Devarim. Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Rosh Chodesh Shvat. Vayhi, ba'ashtei asar Chodesh, b'yachad la'chodesh. Moshe Rabbeinu, who we know was connected to Shammai, as the Pasuk says, lo ish Devarim anoichi soifei tevois Shammai. Moshe is l'shitasei. Because by Shammai who holds today is Rosh Hashanah lo ilanois. So Moshe Rabbeinu, who is a Shammai man, taught the Torah on Shammai's Rosh Hashanah. But that's a different shmuz for a different occasion. But nevertheless, the month of Shvat is not mentioned in the Torah or the, month, or, or the names of any of the other months. And the Ramban says, the reason for this is because these are not Jewish names. Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, and Tamos are not the uh, Jewish words, they're not Hebrew names. But rather, Shemois Chadashim Alu Imanu Mi Babel. The Ramban says, quoting the Yushalmi, quoting the Bereshis Rabbah, that the names of the months came up with us from Babel. Ki mitchila, we did not have these names. And so then the question is, so why do we use them? If they're not Jewish names, why do we use them? Because the Navi tells us, that they, the day will come, that we will no longer, said the God that take us out of, took us out of Egypt, but rather by the life of God who took us out of Bavel. So since the Navi says that the day will come that we're going to remember that God took us out of Babylonia, therefore in order to recall not only the Gullus of uh, Mitzrayim and the Gula from Mitzrayim, in order to recall the Gula of Bavel, Chazarnu likrei hachadashim b'shem shenikroim b'yaretz Bavel, the Ramban says. We went back to call the names of the months, the names that they were called in Bavel, to remember that once upon a time the Jews were stationed in Bavel, and God redeemed us from Bavel the same way He took us out of Mitzrayim. Says Ramban, these are not Jewish words, these are Babylonian words, these are actually Persian words. The Ramban says, Ki Eila, Hashemois, Nisan, Iyar, the names Nisan Iyar, Shemois Parsiyam are Persian words. And the truth is, not only will you not find them in Chumash, you won't find them in Yehoshua, Shoftim, Moshmuel, or Malachim either. They're only found at the very end of the Nevi'im, in the Nevi'e Bavel, the Ramban says, in Megillah Sester. Ba Chodesh Harishain Hu Chodesh Nisan, Ba Chodesh Rasi Hu Chodesh Teves, Bishna Sheva, right? We have the names. Um, we have the names of the Babylonian months in, let's say, the book of Esther, in the book of, um, the Ramban just says the book of Esther, we're going to see in the book of Ezra, in the book of Chagai, and possibly other works as well. And says Ramban, And until today, the Jews of Persia media, they refer to the names of the months as Nisan and Tishrei. So my um, spies have told me that in Persia today, I don't think it's still called Nisan and Iyar. However, in Turkey, we have listeners in Istanbul, in Turkey today, they still call the names of the months Tishrei, Hezron, Kislev. Definitely they call it Nisan and Iyar. In Turkey today, these are still the names of the months. Okay, be it as it may, the Ramban is saying that Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tamas are not Jewish words, but rather they were taken out of Babel. Now, what were the names of the months called before we adopted Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, and Tamas? 
So he said, I don't know, Bachoyder Sharisha and Bachoyder Shasheni. So interestingly, the, if you look in the Yushalmi, the Yushalmi in Rosh Hashanah says they had other names. Look at number three in the Yushalmi in Rosh Hashanah, the Amar Rabbi Chananya, Shema is Chadashim, Alo Biadam Mi Bavel. Barishayna Bayarach Hoisanim. The Yarach Hoisanim. In the first month, in the month of the Mighty Ones. Meaning the Tishrei was called the month of the, excuse me, Nisan was called the month of the Eisanim. Shabai Noldu Avais, Mesu Avais, Nifkadu Imais. So, excuse me, the month of Tishrei, Tishrei was called the Yarach Hoisanim. So, for example, look at number five. Look at number five. Uh, the Pasuk says in Malachim, Vayikah Halu. El HaMelech Shlomo Yikolish Yisrael B'yarach Hoi Sonim Echag Hu Achoydesh Hashvi So the month of Tishrei was called Yarach Hoi Sonim The month of the Mighty Ones The Avais were born, they passed away The Imahis were remembered Or, um, if you look in Sefer Malachim Aleph Parag Vav Hu V'shana Ho'achas Esrei B'yarach Bul In the month of Bul Cheshvan is called the month of Bul Why? Shabai he olet noivel, the leaves wither. Also, the land becomes bulais bulais, clods. Also, shabai bailalim lebehim of we provide food for the animals. So, the month of Cheshvan was called bull. Okay, there you go. How about the month of Ziv, Barishaina, Biyarach Ziv? Look, for example, also Malachim, Bashan Harvias, Yusad Beis Hashem, Biyarach Ziv. The, what month is the month of Ziv? Yeah. The month of Iyar. That's when things begin to flourish and grow and the splendor of the world is apparent. So, the, originally, before they were known as Nisan Iyar, Sivan and Tammuz, they had other names, Yarach Hoisanim, Yarach Bol, and Yarach Ziv. So, let's try to look and uh, analyze and research where are the first times these Babylonian names appear in the Tanakh. So there's an interesting Ibn Ezra, the Ibn Ezra in number 9 in uh, Parsha's Bay, which is this week's Parsha, what do you know? And please pronounce it Ibn Ezra, not Evan Ezra. Um, Ibn Ezra says like this, Nisan Iyar Sivan they're not Hebrew words. Kiyam Lashain Kazdim. Therefore, you will not find in the Pasuk any of these words mentioned except for in the Nevois of number one, Zechariah. Number two, Daniel. Number three, Ezra. Number four, Megillas Esther. That is what the Ibn Ezra says. Okay. Comes the Sefer at Tishbi. Who's the Sefer at Tishbi? Sefer Tishvi was written by Rabbi Eliyahu Bachor. Rabbi Eliyahu, who's Rabbi Eliyahu Bachor? Rabbi Eliyahu Bachor is a very interesting personality in Jewish history. I'll tell you two stories. Um, three years ago, in the summer, I had the opportunity to go to Italy. So, um, they took us to Venice. And you know how these tours go. Some of the time you go to... Uh, Jewish historical places, and other times, you know, they, they give uh, people an opportunity to go to the tourist traps. So they took them, uh, they took us to St. Marco Square, which is a very historical place. The Chida even writes about it in his travels. So I figured, what are they going to do there? They had two hours to shop. Now shopping is like, um, is Gehenna in this world, you know? One, one moment of shopping is Mechaper, almost all of your Averos. So I'm not interested in shopping. So I figured, I knew that um, there was a Two Gedolim who were buried nearby. The, one of them, their, his name was Rabbi Huda Ari of Modina. We once spoke about him. And the other Gadol was Rabbi Yo Bachor. Now Rabbi Yo Bachor, in his time, was a very controversial Gadol. And now, they, now it's almost forgotten, but he actually writes, he wrote a dictionary, a Hebrew dictionary, which is, quote, which is a very important dictionary. Rabbi Yaakov Emden even wrote footnotes on it. And he actually, he didn't have money. So he lived in the house of a priest who supported him. And as payment, he taught the priest Hebrew. And in fact, he quotes the priest in, in the Sefer, the Sefer HaKadosh, Sefer HaTishbi, he quotes the Cardinal. He quotes the Cardinal. This would not fly today, I'm telling you. <laughs> this would not fly today. But be it as it may, 
And the Gedoyle of Prima Godem wrote a parish on the Sefer HaTishbi. Be it as may, so I figure I'm going to go to the grave of the Sefer HaTishbi. Where is he buried? Off of Venice on an island called Lido Island. So we took a taxi, a water taxi. So we, we, took a, we, we uh, paid a guy. Uh, we went with a few people. And they took us to Lido Island. We said, take us to the ancient Jewish cemetery. So we went to the ancient Jewish cemetery. And lo and behold, it says the cemetery is uh, locked for siesta between 12 and 2 o'clock. <laughs> So what are you going to do? Just then an Italian guy is riding on his bicycle. And I remember this very clearly. And he pulls up in front of the cemetery. And we're looking at him. Does this guy have the key? Sure enough, he pulls the, the key out of his pocket. He opens up the cemetery. We're about to go in after him. He slams the door on, on our face. He says, don't you see? You know, siesta, 12 to 2. So it's not, you know, it's not a problem. Jews know. What do you do? You, get, you bribe him. The problem is, Italy is the only country in the world where they don't take bribes. They're such Rishonim, <laughs> they, they can't even be, they don't take Shaykhat over there. So he slammed the door in our face. He says he has to eat hot dogs, and he pulled hot dogs out of his bag, and he barbecued right in front of us, and we couldn't get in. Be it as it may, so we weren't Zechat to go in. We figured he must be buried over here, so we said a Kelmali outside the cemetery. The next year, I was invited back. So we did the same thing, the same Misa, the same time, the same guy, and he let us in. And he asked us who we're looking for. We said, we're looking for Rebbe Yol Bachor. He said, he's not buried here. <laughs> he's a wrong cemetery. You have to go to the ancient, ancient Jewish cemetery. So he went to the ancient, ancient Jewish cemetery, and sure enough, it was locked. So we called a guy, we called a guy who gave us a number that we were sworn to secrecy that after we take down the number, we have to burn it, we can't tell anybody that we had it. We got a hold of the guy who has the key and he opened up and we went to the cover of the Sefer HaTishbi Rebbe Yol Bachor. Okay, so, Yagati Matsasi Tamen. So he asks on this Ibn Ezra, Did he come to kiss you? What? Did he come to you to kiss you? <laughs> the, the Sefer HaTishbi writes something interesting that the names of the Jewish months will only be found in Sefer Zechariah, Daniel, Ezra, and Esther. I, the Ibn Ezra count Sefer Chagai, the Ibn Ezra made a mistake. The problem is the Ibn Ezra did not say that it's found in Chagai. The Sefer HaTishbi says that the Ibn Ezra says that it's found in Sefer Chagai, oh, okay. but you can look in the Ibn Ezra. He doesn't say it's found in Sefer Chagai. The truth is the Chizkuni, another Rishain, he counts Chagai, Zechariah, Daniel, Ezra, and Esther, but the Ibn Ezra does not say what the Sefer HaTishbi says that he said. Okay, look at number 12. Comes the Primagadim. Primagadim writes something interesting. He says that ki arba two lines in the end ki arba sfarim heim sifrei hagoyla. There are four books of Tanakh that are the books of the exile. Nizkaru shemois chadashim. The names of the Jewish months appear. Here they are: Zechariah, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, not Daniel. It does not say the names of the months in Sefer Daniel. I. The Ibn Ezra says Daniel, and the Cheskuni says Daniel, and the Sefer Atishbi says Daniel. They're all wrong, says the uh, Prima Godim. There are times that Gedolim will write things very quickly, and in their haste, they have, may have made an error, and this is an example that the Prima Godim gives of an instance where a great man wrote something perhaps too quickly and did not write it cl correctly because it does not appear in Sefer Daniel. So let's go over, what? Yeah, no, they're not arguing. One of them is right and the others are not. Yeah. I, yeah. That, that's the example the Prima Gaudim gives of where a great person may have made a mistake. But, Rabbi, so let's go through very clearly which names of what months appear in the Tanakh. Okay? Let's start like this. In, in Sefer Ezra, in Sefer Esther, in Megillus Esther, number 13. Okay, so Nisan does appear in Tanakh. Also in Nehemia, we write over here in Parag Beis, Pasuk Aleph, the month of Nisan appears. In Esther, Parag Ches, Pasuk Tes. Okay, so the month of Sivan appears. By the way, I'm just looking at this Pasuk. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
The Rokeach writes on this Pasuk. It's the longest Pasuk in Tanakh. It's very interesting. This Pasuk in Esther is the longest Pasuk in Tanakh. There are 43 words in the Pasuk. The second longest Pasuk in Tanakh is Vayikaru Soifrei HaMelech Vayisahi in the beginning of the Megillah. That's when Haman wrote a decree to abolish, to, to annihilate the Jews. The second longest Pasuk in Tanakh is 40 words. The Rekach says, because Haman wanted to destroy the Jewish people to whom the Torah was given in 40 days. The longest Pasuk in Tanakh is the happiest Pasuk in Tanakh. This is the happiest Pasuk of the Tanakh. Why? Because this is the Pasuk of abolishing the decree of Haman. So it's the longest Pasuk in Tanakh. And how many words is it? 43 words. What's the significance of 43 words? The significance is 40 of the words, the first 40, and an extra three, they were mevatel through three days of Tanesim. That's the Roikeach on this Pasuk. Okay, so it's uh, um, Nisan, it's Tishrei, let's go weiter. What's the longest word? No? What? Is, is that the longest word? Perhaps, okay. Uh, number 13 has Adar in it also. Okay, good, good point. Look at number 15. So we have Nisan, we have Sivan, no ER. Vatishlam hachayma be'esem hachamisha le'elol. So no Tammuz, no Av, we have Elol in Nechemia. Then we have no Tishrei, no Cheshvan. Divrei Nechemia ben Chachlaya, v'hi b'chodesh Kislev we got. Teves we got. And look at number 18, we have Yom Arboim, Esrim v'yarbo, la'ashtei asr chodesh. We have Shavat, and then we have Adar. So how many months do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven months we have. We have Nisan, we have Sivan, we have Elul, we have Kislev, we have Teves, we have Shavat in Zechariah, and we have Adar. So seven out of the months we have. Which months do we not have? We don't have Iyar. We don't have Tammuz. We don't have Av. We don't have Tishrei. We don't have Cheshvan. But seven out of the twelve months we have. Where is the first time all of the months are mentioned? It's in the Targum Sheni Amagilas Esther. That it says, you know, Haman was going through all the days of the week. What day would be an appropriate day to annihilate the Jews? He said, it can't be Sunday. So Monday's not a good day. Tuesday's not a good day. And then Haman in his raffle makes a lottery for the months. And he says, Nisan is not a good month because of the Zuchus of the Pesach. Er is not a good month because of the Mun. See, uh, fell in Er. Sivan is not a good month because... The Torah was given. Tammuz is not a good month because they already surrounded Yushalayim during that month. They breached the wall. So, you know, you can't do... Two bad things are not happening at the same time. Okay. So, Mar Rabbi said, what's the halachic nafkamina? What it comes out is, Nisan is not a Hebrew word. Er is not a Hebrew word. The names of the months are not Hebrew words. They're Aramaic words. They're Persian words. They're Chaldean words. And of what significance is it? What's the halachic nafkamina? So it actually makes it a very interesting uh, nafkamina lahalacha. There are those who have a custom not to get married in the month of Cheshvan. Some have such a minog. Anybody here get married in Cheshvan? <laughs> I got married in Cheshvan. Now, now uh, Rabbi Say, anybody want to admit if they got married? <laughs> Nobody here? <laughs> no? Oh, okay, there you go. <laughs> okay. So there are those who have a custom not to get married in Cheshvan. In fact, it's brought to the attention of the Stechemed that some places have a minog not to get married in Cheshvan. And the writer tells, says to the Stechemed, but I never saw such a thing. I never heard such a thing. I never saw anybody be mocked on this. I, this that people say, Mar Cheshvan is a language of bitterness. Mar Cheshvan is a language of bitterness. As we're going to see, there's no Yom Tif in Cheshvan. It's not mentioned in the Tanakh. Sarah died in Cheshvan. Says the uh, Stechemed, the fact that you never saw such a thing, and you never heard such a thing, the fact what you saw and what you heard doesn't mean anything. Says the Stechemed, in my opinion, the Minog in Yerushalayim, the Minog in Kushna, is not to get married in Cheshvan. But, but and the, the, the questioner said, the truth is, Mar is not a language of bitter. Mar is a language of rain. Hain am kemar It's like a bucket. It's like raining from a bucket. 
And the questioner says, what are you talking about? You're going to say mar is bitter? Mar is bitter if mar is a Hebrew word. So in Hebrew, mar is bitter. But mar is not a Hebrew word. Mar is an Aramaic word. And in Aramaic, mar does not mean bitter. Mar means master. So to say you're not going to get married in Cheshvan because it means bitter, that's not what it means. If it's a Hebrew word, then that makes sense. But it's not a Hebrew word. So Allah Chalamaysa, is one allowed to get married in Cheshvan? So there's a tshuva here from Rabbi Tzal of Stern in the Shalz Tshuva Rabbi Tzal Achachma, Chelak Beis Simen Samach. He brings down from Rabbi Chaim Falaji that in fact it's called Mar Cheshvan because there's no Yamtif and it's not mer- mentioned in the Tanakh. But um, says the Rabbi Tzal Stern, if you look in the Yushalmi, the names of the months came out of Bavel, and therefore to say that the reason why it's called Mar Cheshvan is because it's a language of bitter, that's ridiculous. It's bitter in Hebrew, but this is not a Hebrew word. How could you start analyzing the etymology of the word in a language that the word is not in? That's like saying, oh, March. March means bitter, because Mar in Hebrew is bitter. Yeah, but March is not a, a Hebrew word. And therefore, in fact, says the Rabbi Tzal Shtern, then the Sefer Nachla Shiva, what does Mar mean in Aramaic? Master, Cheshvan is the most important month of the year. Why is Cheshvan the most important month of the year? Not just because I got married in Cheshvan. Because depending on whether Cheshvan is Malay or Chasar, that sets the tone for the whole year. It's one of the months that all the other months are either Malay or Cheshvan or, or Chasar. Mar Cheshvan could go either way. Therefore, Cheshvan is Rosh Lechol HaChadoshim. That's why the third base of Megdash will be built in Cheshvan. So a lot of good things happen in the month of Cheshvan. So um, therefore, to say that it's Mar, a language of bitter, is ridiculous. It's a bitter in Hebrew, but not in Aramaic. And therefore, the bottom line is, if it's your minog not to get married in Cheshvan, so don't get married in Cheshvan. Hanach Lohem and Hagam. But if there's no such established minog, Hareze, Zariz, Vehizkir, you should get married Better to get married in Cheshvan than in Kislev, you know, and even better than Cheshvan, Tishrei, a month earlier. And even better than that, a month before that. But there's no Cheshvan whatsoever not to get married in Cheshvan based on what we're learning. That the names of the months are not Hebrew names, they are Aramaic names. Okay, so that's uh, something probably we're all aware of, that the names of the months are Aramaic names. But then I reminded myself, they're Aramaic names, they're Persian names, they're Chaldean names. Isn't there like a lot of Torah on the names of the months of the Jewish calendar? Don't we always darshan that the names of the months have specific significance? For example, for example, we're going to come to it, right? The month, let's start, let's start, uh, Rishan, the month of Nisan. The month of Nisan. Why is it called Nisan? So the Bnei Yisachar writes, I have it on the sheet for the Bnei Yisachar in ma- number 23, Ma'amari Chodesh Nisan, that Nisan is a Lashon of Nis. It's the month of Nisim. All the miracles of Yitzhiya Mitzrayim occurred in Nisan. That's why it's called Nisan. And uh, in Hebrew, when a word ends in Nun, Nun means like the manufacturer of. It's a month that manufactures miracles. Why are we darshaning the name of Nisan? Nisan is not a Jewish word. Why are we darshaning? Oh, Nisan is Nis. It's that, that would be nice if it would be a Hebrew word. But nobody's going to darshan November. You know what's Shan November? November is this, that, and that. You know, why are we darshaning the, the name of Nisan? In fact, this morning, I found that this is not only B'nai Saskar, it's a Rashi and Shas. Is there a Gemara Brachis here? Right here. <laughs> oh, okay, you, great, good job. Rashi in Brachais, I found this morning, on Daf Nun Vav, says exactly this point of the Bnei Saskar, that the month of Nisan is called Nisan because it's the month of miracles. Nisei Misrach Shilach Sha'ayidei Nisim Nikra Nisan Rashi says Sha'akol Tzara Habal Yisrael Oimrim Oisai Al Rashi says the month of Nisan comes from Nisim Rashi, come on You don't know the Yishalmi? That these are not Hebrew words These are Aramaic words That's Ershtens Let's move on to the month of Iyar There's an interesting Gemara in Shabbos Dav Kuf Mem Zayin Beiz The Gemara says Kulhu Shakyani all liquids are beneficial between Pesach and Shavuos. If you're drinking an elixir, a medication, it's very helpful between Nisan and Shavuos. 
Why? Says the Chassam Soifer. Because what month comes between Nisan and Sivan? Yeah. Iyar. You know what Iyar stands for? Ani Hashem Roisecha. So therefore, it's a month of healing, of medicinal value. Says the Chassam Soifer. The month of Iyar stands for Ani Hashem Roisecha. Now, there are two ways of spelling Iyar. One is Aleph Yud Reish, and there's another way to spell it with two Yuds. And if you spell it with two Yuds, then it stands for Oyevai Yashuvu Yevoishu Raga. Chsam Soifer, that's a very nice pshat. But Iyar is not a Hebrew word. Iyar is a Persian word. Why are we darshaning Persian words? Why are we darshaning a word that's not a Jewish word? If, you know, imagine somebody said, you know what the pshat in September is? September stands for Shisha Sidre Mishnah. Why are we darshaning a non-Jewish word? Let's move on. Tammuz. Now Tammuz is the strangest of all of them. Because Tammuz is not only a non-Jewish word, Tammuz is the name of the Persian idol. Tammuz, Tammuz, the, the Rav Yaakov Kamenetsky writes on this week's parsha that the name of the Avodah Zara of Persia was Tammuz. And listen to this. Comes, this is a, I don't quote it often, but the Likute Maran from Nachman of Breslov. He says that the month of Tammuz, Tuf Mem Zayin, what happened when Moshe came down in the month of Tammuz with the Luchos? He saw Klai Solar serving the Egel, so he took the Luchos, he smashed them to smithereens, and the Gemara tells us in Erevin that the Torah began to be forgotten when Moshe Rabbeinu broke the Luchos. Shikha came to the world. Um, when Moshe broke the Luchais. So you know what Tammuz stands for? Zichru Toiras Moshe. Because since it's the month of forgetfulness, therefore Tammuz starts for Zichru Toiras Moshe. So you say the Tammuz is with the Vav. No, the Luchais were Vav by Vav, but the Luchais were broken. So therefore the Tammuz has no Vav in it anymore. That's what Nachman says. So Tammuz is a tough Mem Zayin. What about the Vav? The Vav is the Luchais. They were broken. Or he says... Moshe presented the Torah to Klai Yisrael in Tammuz. So Tammuz stands for Zman Matan Torah Seinu. I don't understand. Why are we darshaning the name of a because Persian idol? Imagine if a guy came in. You know what Pshat in the Yoizel is? You know what Pshat in Yoshka is? <laughs> it's Rashi Tevois. Uh, whatever. You know, it's one thing you want to have Rashi Tevois, but why are we darshaning the Rashi Tevois of a um, Persian idol? Or actually, I found... There's um, one of the leading Mikubalim in Eretz Yisrael today, very um, beloved uh, personality, Rav Gamliel Rabinovich, wrote many, many svarim, the Tiv set, and he says, you know, big tzaddikim, some people, when do they do tshuva? Never. Other people, they do tshuva by Ne'ilah, some people by Kal Nidre, some people wake up Rosh Hashanah, some people Elul, some people wake up already the month before, and what does Tama stand for? Zmane. Tshuva memashmashin uba'im. The times of, of tshuva are inching closer. Are inching closer. Or, some say it stands for, Zrizim akdimim v'oisim tshuva. Tamu stands for Zrizim And what does Av stand for? Elol ba. Elol is coming. That's what Av stands for. Okay? So, why are we darshaning Rashi Tevois of uh, Babylonian idols, Persian idols, you know, it sounds almost humorous. We have Torah from Nachman of Breslov, Zmane Tshuva, Mamash Meshin Uboin. And then you come to Elul. Elul's got to have more Ramazim than any month of the year. I mean, for sure. Right? I'm sure you never heard before. Ani Ladoi Dividoi Dili, right? You never heard that one. But uh, we know the Kitzer brings down from the Arizal many Ramazim, Ish Lureyehu, Matanoi Slav Yoinim, Ina Liyadi Vesamti Lecha, Uvalat Siyoin Goy. El Ul is Elo. The Rishonim bring down. The Avodraham brings it down. Really? and Goy. El Ul. Elo. That's the Avodraham. The Rishonim bring. I could t- there, are, there are dozens and dozens of Razim to Elo. Why are we darshaning Ramazim to Elo? Elo is not a Jewish word. It's not a Hebrew word. It's not in the Chumash. It's not in the Nevi'im Rishonim. It's the, okay, I understand. We're going to use it because we want to remember Hashem took us out of Babel. Fine, so we'll remember some, but what's all the Torah on these words? To remember those. Talk about Tishrei. Here's a good one. This is an important idea. We all know there's a concept of gematria. There are a few rare instances where there's a new type of gematria. 
And that is you could utilize Nekudais as part of the Gematria. Nekudais also have Gematria. What, are the, what, are the, what is the Gematria of Nekudais? So it depends if it's a dot or a line. A dot is like a Yud and is 10. A line is a Vav. So for example, a Chirik is one dot, so a Chirik is 10. A Tsere is two dots, a Tsere is 20. A Segel is three dots, a Segel is 30. A Patach, on the other hand, is a Vav, is six. Now one of them is complicated, a Kamatz. A Kamatz is a Vav with a Yud, is 16. Okay? There are times, there are sources, actually it comes from the Shla Kadosh, that a dot is 10 and a line is 6. So what's the Gematria of Tishrei? So Tuf is 400, Shin is 300, Resh is 200, Yud, 910. But let's put in the dots. There's a Chiruk under the Tuf, that's 920. There's a Shva under the Shin, 940. There's a Tsere under the Resh, 960. The Gematria of Tishrei, says B'nai Yisachar, is 960. And who cares? How many lug are in a mikvah? 960 lug. Interesting, if you have a beria, the Gemara Bavli says, a beria filu be'elef le'bato. So if a rat falls into your cholent, what? You know, in Eretz Yisrael, they have these, in the yeshivas, they have these huge pots. You never know what you're going to find inside over there. If a rat falls into the cholent, according to the Bavli, it's not bato. But the Yushalmi disagrees with the Bavli. The Yushalmi says, Beria Batal Betat Kas in 960. So in the month of Tishrei, says the Bnei Yisachar, we're the Beria, we're like the Sharats. In the 960 hours of Tishrei, 40 times 24, we become Batal, meaning we're, we're able to purify and cleanse ourselves. But what I'm, what I'm trying to bring out is, look how significant the name of the, of the month is. Not only do we darshan the letters, we even take the gematria of the Nekudais. Who was menake this word, Tishrei? Some Persian was deciding what to refer to the name of the month. And he put in, let's put in one dot here, two dots there, and now all of a sudden we have Torah of the gematria of the word Tishrei, based on the Nekudais. Kislev. Kislev also, the Bnei Saskha writes, we have Lamed Vav Nerois, which correspond to the 36 hours of the Or Haganos, which is hidden in the Nerois of Hanukkah. So we have significance for all the many of the months of the year, Nisan, Iyar, Tammuz, and it seems a little bit humorous why we would darshan uh, significance and importance to the names of the months of the year, if after all, the Yushami says, Alu Mi Babel. So we're going to give two approaches today. I'm going to tell you the approach of the Bnei Yisachar, where he's not really asking this question, but something that he says I think would answer the question. And then we're going to say an original approach. Okay. The Bnei Yisachar says as follows, that even though these are Babylonian names, and they're not found in the prophets, it's only found basically in the Ksuvim, but the opinion of the Bnei Yisachar is, that the names of the months were Nimsuru and Harsinai. Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz, Av, Elo, Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Teves, Shvat Adar were given to Moshe Rabbeinu and Harsinai. So what does that mean? That's not what it says. Yushalmi says they came out of Babel. There's no question they must have been given to Moshe Rabbeinu and Harsinai. What's the proof? Says Menei Salzcha, the proof is, it's a Gemara Megillah. The Gemara says... Um, well, let me tell you what the Bnei Yisachar says. You know what the proof is? Because if you look in Targum, you'll, saw, you'll find the names of the Jewish months. And where did Targum come from? Unklus. And where did Unklus get it from? There's a, a principle that Targum Unklus was given on Har Sinai. That's what it's brought in Shulchan Aruch. Targum Unklus was given on Har Sinai. This is brought in many Rishonim. Unklus is Targum was given on Har Sinai. That's why some people ask, why should I say Targum Unklus? I don't know Aramaic. I don't understand what he's talking about. And he doesn't explain the Psukim. So what am I, I... Isn't it more beneficial to read the English translation than to say Unklus? Isn't Rashi better than Unklus? 
And the advantage that the Paiskim say that Unklus has is Rashi was not given me Sinai. It's based on Midrashim, Unklus was given me Sinai. That's brought Lahalacha. Rashi refers to Unklus. Rashi quotes Unklus. But Unklus did not invent it. The Gemara says, now, where, where does this come from? Take a look in the Gemara Megillah and Nafgimel. The Gemara says, Targum shall Taira, Unklus Hagera Amru. The Targum on the Chumash was said by Unklus. From who? From Rebelez and Rabbi Yeshua. Ah, well, says the Bnei Yisachar, if Unklus was Misinai, we find in Targum the names of the Jewish months, for example. Now, the Bnei Yisachar doesn't say what he's referring to, but the printer says, for example, look at number 31. It says over here, Oid, look at number 31, Targum Yonasem Ben Uziel Amparshas Noyach, Oid Kol Yoyme Ara Deroya, all the days of the, of the earth, Bitkufas Tishrei, Vachatzada, Bitkufas Nisan, Vikaira, Bitkufas Teves, Vachaim, Bitkufas Tamas. So we see we have in the Targum the names of the Jewish months. How could the names of the Jewish months be in the Targum? The names of the Jewish months were in Imsur Misina. How could they be in the Targum? Excuse me. They didn't come until the Alumi Babel. How could Targum say Nisan, Tamos, uh, Teves, how could Targum say that? These are Babylonian names. It must be they were giving me Sinai. Ah, so here's the problem. Good question. The problem is, and I was bothered by this, that just because the names of the Jewish months appear in Targum Yonasem and Uziel does not indicate that, that they were giving me Sinai. Because Targum Yonasem and Uziel is not Targum Unclus. How do we know that? The Gemara Gemara continues. The Gemara says, Targum of the Torah was said by Unclus from Rav Lazen Rabbi Yeshua. Targum of Nevi'im was given by Yonis Ben Uziel from Chagah Ezechari Malachi. And when he revealed it, Eretz Yisrael shook 400 Amas by 400 Amas. And the Rebbe Hashem said, Who revealed the secret to my children? So Yonis Ben Uziel stood up on his feet and he said, I'm the one who revealed the secrets. I didn't do it for my honor and not for honor my household. I did it for your honor. He wanted to reveal the Targum of Ksuvim. The Baskal said, Genik shine enough already. So the Gemara asks, and the Targum of the Torah, Uncle said it, but we have a Pasuk in Ezra that Darshins, that the Pasuk is referring to Targum Unclus. So the Gemara says, no, Unclus didn't say it. Unclus restored it. We always had Targum Unclus. Unclus says, Misinai. It was forgotten and it was restored by Unclus Hagar. So wait a second. The Gemara seems to be saying clearly that the Targum on the Torah was said by Unclus. The Targum on the Nevi'im was said by Yonasim ben Uziel. And the Targum on the Ksuvim was not said by Yonasim ben Uziel. He wanted to say it, but uh, they told him not to do it. So the fact that the Bnei Yisachar brings a raya, that the, um, the names of the Jewish months appear in Targum Yonasim ben Uziel, that's very nice. But Targum Yonasim ben Uziel is not um, Targum Unclus. So you have to say, that what the Bnei Yisachar means is the same way the Gemara says Targum Unclus was given Misinai. Targum Yonasem Ben Uziel would, all, would then also have to have been uh, given Misinai. In other words, even though the Gemara is not explicit, and the Gemara seems to say Unclus' Targum always existed, and the Gemara is not referring to Targum Yonasem Ben Uziel's Targum, the Bnei Yisachar seems to be equating the two. But here's the problem. And that is, there's a very big misconception out there. If you ask most people, who wrote Targum Yonasen Ben Uziel? Most people would say, Targum Yonasen Ben Uziel, which is absolutely not true. Targum Yonasen Ben Uziel did not write Targum Yonasen Ben Uziel. Targum Yonasen Ben Uziel wrote Targum on Nevi'im. But Targum Yonasen Ben Uziel, I'm not going to tell you nobody holds that way. But I will tell you, I never found one Achroin who says, Targum Yonasen Ben Uziel is written by Yonasen Ben Uziel. Who wrote Targum Yonasem Ben Uziel? First of all, the, look in number 35. The Marsha writes openly that it's Muchach in the Gemara that Yonasem Ben Uziel did not write a perush on Chumash. The Marsha writes, he says, V'loi hoya mefarish rak nevi'im de'ika d'mili d'mistaman ad shabal unklosu perush l'dorei gam ha-toira. Marsha says Yonasem Ben Uziel never wrote a perush on the Chumash. 
He left it empty because this, the Chumash is self-explanatory. The Nevi'im need Pirush, so Yonis and Menazil is Mepharish. So even if the Bnei Yisachar holds that the names of the Jewish months appear in Tagum Yonis and Menazil, that doesn't prove they were Nims from Sinai, because Tagum Yonis and Menazil was not written by Yonis and Menazil. So even if Tagum Yonis and Menazil is Misinai, the Targum that we have called Targum Yonis and Menazil was not written by Yonis. So he said, what? I never heard, nobody ever told me that. I learned in yeshiva for 50 years, nobody ever told me that Yonis and Menuziel never wrote Targum Yonis and The answer is because he never learned who wrote it. So the Sefer Ha'aruch, a reshine. There's something called Maisef Ha'aruch. And this is the Shita of the Chida in the Maras Ha'ay in Masech Megillah Adab Chavches. And the Chida repeats himself in the Shem Ha'gdoyle Ma'arech Ha'svarim Ois Taf. The Maritz Chios also in two Svarim in the Geras Bikares and the Imre Bina, they all, the Pe'echad, are made. And if you find somebody who disagrees, I would love to see it. I never saw anyone who disagrees. They all say Targum Yonis and Ben-Uziel. did not write Yonis and Ben-Uziel. What happened? What happened was like this. You ever seen the Makaris Gedolis Chomish, there's something called Targum Yushalmi? There were two Targum Yushalmis. Ta- so the printers didn't know what to do. So they originally wrote Taf Yud. One they called Targum Yishalmi, and the other Nusuch they wrote Taf Yud. And then the later printers, who were not as big Tamei Chachamim, misinterpreted it and wrote Targum Yonison Ben Uziel. There is no authoritative opinion that I am aware of that says that Yonison Ben Uziel wrote a Perush on the Chumash. So, even if the Bnei Yisachar it wants to say, it wants to maintain that the names of the Jewish month appear in Targum Yonis ben Azil. And you want to say Targum Yonis ben Azil was Nimsura Misinai. The thing is that Targum Yonis ben Azil was not written by Yonis ben Azil, and therefore it was certainly not Nimsura Misinai. And uh, th- that would sort of bring us back to the question that why are we giving such significance to the names of the Jewish months? So now the truth is, a friend of mine, when I gave this shir last, said, you can find in Targum Unclus the names of the Jewish months. But not all of them. I actually did a computer search this morning. Eor does not appear. Sivan does not appear. Tammuz does not appear. Av, Elo, Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev, Teve, Shvad, Adar. And I searched for Nisan. Nisan doesn't appear either. However, I remember when I gave this to last, a friend of mine, Avrami Zon, said he found Nisan in this week's Parsha. So I already looked. Where would you expect Targum to say Nisan in the sixth parasha? B'chodesh hazel achem, roish chadashim. Or you would think Targum would say, you know, B'nisan. No, he doesn't say anything. If you look on that pasuk, Targum says, Ha'chodesh yarcha hadein l'choyin reish yarchin, kadmai hu l'choyin liyarche shata. But in Perak Yud Beis, pasuk Yud Ches, Benisan biarba asra yoyma liyarcha. It's interesting why the Targum, if he is aware of the month of Nisan, would not use it on the Pasuk HaChadosh HaZalachem, but would use it in Benisan and Perak Yudbeis HaZalachem. That's what my friend found. This morning I found another place where the Targum says Benisan, in Parshas Bahaloischa. Let's see. Ah, uh, Parak Tess in also the Yasim and Ezra both made a barba so you have a chazer nothing barba so you have a biarcha adin bein shimshaya but in pasuk hey the avadu yas pischa benisan so it's interesting they're also targum the first time it appears he doesn't say benisan so apparently the month of Nisan targum onklus was aware of. And this may be a defense for what the Bnei Yisachar is saying, because at least the month of Nisan appears in, not Targum Yonis and Uziel, but in Targum Onkelis. But it's, uh, it's, it's a bit curious why Nisan is the only month that Onkelis mentions. He doesn't mention the names of any other months. In fact, in, par- in uh, Parshas Emar, their Onkelis dances around saying Nisan. He doesn't say Nisan. Um, for, uh, you can look it up in Parak Chav Gimel Pasake in Sefer Vayikra. There the Unklis avoids saying the name of Nisan. So, okay, it's an interesting thing. 
So uh, I guess the first approach would be, like the Bnei Saskar saying, that even though the names of the Jewish months are of Persian origin, they may even be the names of Avodah Zarah, of the Persians, but nevertheless, there's a concept that the names of the months, according to the Bnei Saskar, were Nimsuru Misinai. We're sort of, you know, who are we to ask on the Bnei Saskar? We're, you know, Afar Tachas Raglov. But it seemed to be a question on him, because the truth is, Onklis does not really mention the names of the months, perhaps with the exception of the month of Nisan. So what I want to suggest, which I think is a very important Yisoyed, and this is a Yisoyed that the Maral mentions many times in his writing, and that is, there's a concept, and this explains a lot of things in Jewish literature, there's a concept um, that the, the Maral enunciates in the following way, the name of this concept is, Dvarim gedoylem enam b'mikra. Great things are not coincidental. For example, in the Gemara and Gitin, the Gemara talks about the state of Klal Yisrael in the times of the second Mesa Mikdash. So when the uh, Romans were setting siege, so the Jewish, Jewish people had enough resources within the walls of Yishalayim to last them, the Gemara says, for how long? 21 years. So Maral says, like, that a Gemara would not give a number unless there's something we could learn from the number. The Gemara does not give historical facts. So if the Gemara says they were in the city and they had enough resources for 21 years, we have the right to darshan what's the significance of 21 years. It says in Maralwai, A big thing like this is not coincidental. And therefore the Maral goes on to explain the, the uh, spiritual significance of the fact that we had the resources to last for 21 years. So you say, I don't know, uh, it's just a historical fact. They had enough salt to last them 21 years. The Maral says you should never look at things like that. If the Torah gives you information, you're licensed to try to understand the significance of it, even though to our minds it seems like trivial information. But the concept is based on the following. That anything that happens to the nation of God has an extra measure of hashkacha pratis. That if the Rebbein Shem Orkashe, that we should be in the city for 21 years, there must be a divine providence to that. And this is a concept where you look in all the Sfarim. You know, even, let's say, the, the Munkacha writes in his Sefer Divrei Torah, he has a piece that Jewish children have a following expression, and therefore... Let's darshan the expression of Yiddish Kindalach. Say, it's ridiculous. Why? I don't know why Jewish kids say that. I mean, because uh, they heard that they made it up. It's empty. No. If Jewish children say, he's talking about monkeys, there's, an, uh, there's a childish uh, uh, a Yiddishism that monkeys are called far shaltina mention, false people. And he says it's based on the Gemara in Sanhedrin that the Darha Flaga was changed into monkeys. So you're saying, why, why is somebody of such magnitude wasting his time expounding on an expression of Jewish children? The answer is, anything that Klal Yisrael does, even a Jewish child, Minog Yisrael, you ever see Svarim talk about, what's Pshad in this Jewish Minog? I don't know. They, they, um, it's easy to take flour and, and make a matzah ball. So you're going to darshan why matzah balls are round and not square? Uh, you're going to give a drosh on that? But there's such a concept. Minna Yisrael is significant. We don't know who did it. We don't know who started it. We don't know why it was started. And to our minds, maybe it was for a very trivial reason. But if God who loves the Jewish people orchestrated that Klal Yisrael has a certain custom, a certain practice, we've adopted a certain expression or name of a month. It doesn't matter if the name of the month is Persian in origin. It doesn't matter if the name of the month is Babylonian origin. It doesn't matter where it came from. It could be the name of an Avedah of uh, the Chaldeans. But the fact that Klal Yisrael adopted Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tamuz, it doesn't matter if Goya made it up, it doesn't matter if it's the name of their Avedah but if it was adopted by Yidin, and now it's part of our corpus of history, of, of Halacha, that we call it Nisan, then we're entitled to darshan it. We're entitled to say Torah, Elul is Anil Adoy Divi We're darshaning Elul, Elul is a Persian word. Yes. Because we believe 
Dvarim Gedoyim Einam Vemikra. We believe that if ha- the Hashkocha El Yoyna has it, that now Klal Yisrael refers to something in a certain way, then it has the significance. It's orchestrated divinely. Now the truth is, I did find somebody who agrees with the, um, the Bnei Yisachar. There's a Sefer Yimolet Nafshoi, Rabbi Avram Shalom Chai Chamoi, who brings a Raya to the Bnei Yisachar that the names of the Jewish months were given me Sinai. And his Raya is that there's a Sefer called the Sefer HaYitzira, which is attributed to Avram Avinu, which definitely predated uh, Persia and, and Bavel. And there in the Sefer Yitzhira you have the names Nisan, Iyar, Sivan, Tammuz. So clearly they were of um, earlier origin. All we're suggesting very humbly is do we need to say the names of the months are Nimsuru Misinai to be able to give meaning in them? In other words, are we only entitled to Darsh in them because they're given Misinai? Or I think there's a Yisoyed, there's a Yisoyed in our, in our literature. There's a Yisoyed in, in Machshavas Yisrael. That anything that you didn't do, whether it's a minog, whether it's a practice, whether it's an expression, whether it's a word, if it's something we've adopted, that everything we do is given a special significance because whatever happens to Yidin is v'hashkach al yoyna, v'hashkach pratis. And if we've adopted these names, despite the fact that they're Persian or Babylonian or Kazdiim, they're for sure laden with a lot of significance and meaning. And perhaps this is another perspective on the uh, meaning of the Shemois HaChadashim. Have a great day. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com